Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Hamid Trades Show. In today's video, we're going to go over the SPY, the NASDAQ, the IWM, the bonds, the dollar, the VIX. We're going to try to figure out which way the market is going to go and why it's going to go there. And I'm going to share my thoughts, all right? Without further ado, let's get started with the video. Number one, we've got some conflicting data. So the 30-year bonds generally are correlated to the overall market. So if the bonds are doing well, then the overall market is also doing well, right? But today we see that the bonds made a complete about face. They completely reversed from the very strong move that they had earlier um, yesterday where we closed above resistance. And today they came back and fell lower. Okay. So now what we can do here is we can make a Fibonacci level from the swing lows to the swing highs. So for now, we can see that the bonds are holding the 38.2% Fib. Generally, that is still a bullish retest. So it's not a complete, complete shattering of this upward momentum, right? But if we break below the 38.2 and specifically the 50% Fib, that will start showing a lot of weakness in the bonds. And by that point, um, the stock market will most likely start taking a, a consideration into the bond's weakness. And then the stock market will also start falling. So right now, obviously, the stock market had a bit of a green day, right? Sorry. Um, there we go. Had a bit of a green day, right? Uh, we reversed. So yesterday, we had a big reversal, right? Today, we reversed back up. We closed above the 38.2% FIB for the first time in for the, for the first time this year. <laughs> uh, and things are looking like in my opinion when you look at it from this standpoint right the momentum is still very very strong so the upside at least tomorrow in my opinion i would be very 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 shocked if we don't get a retest of 380 392.50 which is going to be the 50 percent fib i would be very very shocked if we don't get a retest at that level there's no macroeconomic news coming out tomorrow uh, CPI data comes out on Thursday. We already had the Fed, uh, you know, the, the the board meeting with the Europeans today. So uh, there's nothing really that's going to affect the market. Um, yeah, I just had to recheck uh, to see just in case if there was any news coming out tomorrow. And there isn't. So because that's the case, I do very, very strongly believe that we should retest 392.50 at the very least. And basically, we should get closer to this high here, 393.70. Um, it's almost like it would be very, very, like it would not really even make sense for us to start like without testing the upper levels first, without testing 392 first. If we don't even test 392, like I would be shocked if we like gap down and just never like even come close to these levels here. So that's my opinion. Um, if even if we were holding something overnight, which we're not, right? I would be long overnight, one hundred percent. Like this sort of setup is, uh, it's asking to get a retest to the upper levels of resistance, and to piggyback off this, right? We can take a look at the dollar, and the dollar is continuing to show weakness. So we know that uh, basically the dollar and the stock market have an inverse relationship. So if the dollar is doing poorly then the stock market is basically doing well. So in my opinion, the dollar still looks very weak. It's not, this is not a longing opportunity on the dollar. This is basically a setup where you get a, you get a retest of levels of resistance so you could go back short again. So <laughs> if that's the case for the dollar, then, and if the dollar is gonna continue falling, in my opinion, right, then that means that the stock market should go up. And I think that is what can end up happening. And um, we checked in yesterday's video in the past, you know, uh, while there was weakness in the dollar, what was happening with the stock market. And we saw that the stock market was very, very strong. So um, let's see if that could be a repeat of what ends up happening here. And also, originally, one of the main reasons why I was bullish on the spy down here um i believe i made a video somewhere down here somewhere right where we were trading like very close to 380 and i was saying that i would be very surprised 
if uh, we end up falling lower. And that was so I was very bullish down here. I was ex I was expecting us to get a pop, a pop. So the main reason for that was because the international markets were very very strong. So now when taking a look at what's going on in the international markets, right? Take a look at the German markets. The German markets are still continuing to push upwards, and they are not extremely overextended to the uh, to the upside. You can see that they're still not really that far away from the Bollinger Bands. So it's not like we're opening outside of the Bollinger Bands and then pushing on upwards. That would be extreme overextension to the upside. And you know that if we, you know, if we open outside of the uh, lower level of the Bollinger Bands on the SPY, for example, that's a very good buying opportunity. If we open outside of the upper level on the Bollinger Bands, that's a very good shorting opportunity. But we are not yet overextended completely on the German markets. So German markets still look pretty good. But looking at the Japanese markets, the Nikkei, this is still, um, you know, obviously, obviously it took a very big hit recently, but the international markets, uh, especially with the Bank of Japan buying bonds back, basically like injecting money into the economy, similar to what the Fed was doing, they are also pumping and, you know, bouncing the market a bit. The English markets, you can see that there is still a lot more room to go for it to become very overextended to the upside. So we saw what happened um, yesterday where the uh, where we opened outside of the op uh, where we opened outside of the upper level of the Bollinger Band here. We ended up this was basically a good shorting opportunity, right? Similar to what I was just saying. And we fell instead of continuing to fall. What ended up happening was we bounced right back up. So now the UK markets can end up continuing upwards as well. If we get a re if we get a break above this high here, then uh, this can just continue going up. And then the UK markets will have a pretty big influence on the German markets. And uh, that would be very interesting to see what happens because uh, this is still like a, this is a bullish setup. There's no automatic reason to be bearish just yet on the uk markets and then of course when you take a look at the <laughs> chinese markets uh the chinese markets bounced very very heavily and are still continuing to show a lot of strength uh kramer is bearish on the chinese markets so that means the chinese markets are probably going to end up uh like doubling in the past no, i'm just kidding but yeah no so the chinese markets the german markets the japanese markets and the uk markets are all very very strong and uh, that's another reason why, you know, I think the overall stock market can continue going up. It's a good start to the year. Um, I do think that we can get at least 392. I'd be very, very shocked. And then, of course, when taking a look at like the large tech stocks, we can see that they're still they don't look entirely bearish. So, for example, Apple doesn't look terrible. Amazon did really, really well. Microsoft doesn't look terrible either. Um, it's still moving upwards. Nvidia doesn't look terrible. AMD, of course, similar to Nvidia. Tesla had a big bounce upwards. Um, you know, stagnating a bit. Facebook <coughs> doing doing really, sorry <clears throat> doing really well. And um, yeah, I mean, these tech stocks are not getting beaten down. All right, so if the tech stocks are still showing some sort of strength and holding support really well, then that means that there's still more room to go to the upside. So for those reasons, um, and especially the fact that the IWM is just continuing to show a lot of strength and, um, you know, the IWM just, you know, it's just going to continue going up. Uh, the upper level of the Bollinger Bands of the IWM are pointed upwards as well. So that means that uh, there's a lot more room to the upside for it to become overextended to the upside. So that means that there's more room to the upside. And, uh, you know, the fact that all of these large tech stocks are either showing strength or holding support, that means that there's a lot more room to the upside relative in the tech, in, uh, in the tech sector because it becomes a better uh, buying opportunity, more percentage gain potential to the upside for tech. And uh, it'd be very interesting to see if this continues upward. So um in terms of the cues 
I believe we should get a retest of at least 273, 50, 274 tomorrow. At least 274 tomorrow. I'd be very shocked if we don't. Uh, for the IWM, uh, 180, 180, should be a level that we do retest tomorrow at least. Um, basically, we should get a retest. We should bounce like maybe like another percentage at least across the board. Like at least half a percentage to a percentage at least uh, across the board. And then once we hit this 50% FIB, so we're going to have to keep an eye on the SPY, right? Once it gets close to this 50% FIB, especially at these highs here at 393.70, that's when things are going to have to make a decision. Um, and depending on how the international markets are, as well as depending on if the bonds end up breaking below this zone here, the 38.2% FIB zone and the 50% FIB zone. So if... We are still trading above here on the bonds. And uh, it, even if like the international markets had a bit of a stagnation day, if the bonds can hold support and the stock market is continuing to show a lot of strength, you know, uh, yeah, you know, I, I do think I would be bullish. I mean, I, I do think that the move should be bullish tomorrow. We should have some sort of a move upwards. I would be shocked, to be honest. But of course, you know, um, I could be wrong. So yeah, there's that. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Uh, if you guys enjoyed, please make sure to subscribe, like the video, comment on the video, and do all that good stuff. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Thank you.